So, have you ever had a good idea that turned out to really be a bad idea? Yeah, I thought people would like to see a project make its way from conception to completion in one day. But, judging from the poor showing the original one day build video had, I guess it was just a little too long for most people. So in this video, let's jump right to the construction. Just understand that I put the driver on the DATS to get TS specs. And then I designed the best compromise box in WinISD from those specs. And we'll pick up on the construction last Saturday morning around 10 a.m. I like to sketch out a visual of my project before I start cutting wood. Doing this helps me keep track of what size each panel needs to be and how many of each I need to cut. You can also make notes as you go on the same paper to kind of keep track of things. Time to get the table saw adjusted for my first cut of 10 and a half inches. Now that I have the front and back panels cut, I'll adjust the table saw to 9 inches for the sides and top and bottom panels. That didn't take long. I love my table saw. Alright, I have all the panels cut and I've dry fit them and they all fit well. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue to glue this thing together and it cures to about 80% strength in just a couple of hours. But I'm already going to be stressing the joints a bit to do a round over, so I measured the openings for both the driver and the amplifier now and we'll cut them out before assembly. Making a little room for the driver to breathe on the back side with a Dremel tool. Here's a quick tip to keep your extension cord from pulling as you work. Drill a two inch hole in your work table, feed it through, and use a clamp to secure it. Now let's head to my handy clamp rack and pick out a few to glue this thing together. As I mentioned, I'm going to use Gorilla Glue for this cabinet, and I'm spritzing the panel opposite of where I'll apply the glue with a little water to activate it. Well, if you've seen one glow up, you've pretty much seen them all, so I won't bore you with lots of footage of this, but basically I place the clamps on with light pressure, and then use a mallet to tap each panel into position. Then I tighten them down firmly. Now we wait. But not too long, I've got to get this done by tonight. While the glue sets up, I cut a length of wire and solder it to the speaker driver. Then I tin the leads where it will connect to the amp. Well, that just means I apply a little bit of solder to the wire to keep the individual strands from coming apart. Well, it's been about two and a half hours since I glued up the enclosure, so I need to get these clamps off now so I can sand the box smooth, as well as apply a roundover to the sides of the enclosure. That's one of the things I plan for to make the assembly go quicker. So here's where this project gets kind of interesting. I think most people, if they were faced with designing, building, and totally finishing a subwoofer to fully working order in only one day, would most likely just throw a coat of paint on this thing and call it done. But not me. I'm a veneer guy, and I like to make any project I undertake as good as I can make it. So I'm going to apply veneer to the front, sides, back, and top of this enclosure. And hopefully I can get everything done in time for it to still be today. Keep watching to see if I'm able to pull it off. I had planned to be further along at this point in the day, so I need to keep moving as quickly as possible. I'm using my stationary belt sander to even out the edges on the enclosure and sand the entire thing smooth. Next, I need to apply a roundover to all four sides of the box. I'm using a one inch roundover, which is pretty large. I'll do it in two passes so I don't overload my router. I just need to do a quick sand to fully soften those roundovers before the next step, laying out the veneer. The reason I rounded over the cabinet in the first place is so I could do the entire veneering process in only two applications. First I'll do the front, sides, and back in one application, and then the top piece of veneer last. This should save me some time. 
I hope. I'm using contact cement to apply the veneer. This stuff is water-based, and I think I know why they call it that. It's pretty watery. It does go on really easy, though, with a roller. I coated the cabinet first, since the MDF will absorb the cement more readily. Then I did the veneer. Then the cabinet again to make sure it was fully covered, especially the end grain. I have to wait a full hour for the contact cement to dry, so that leaves me some time to make some food. Well, let me just let him tell you. I'm going to take this piece of 2x4 that I cut in half previously. It's a scrap and I'm going to make some 1.5 inch by 1.5 inch by 1.5 inch feet for this subwoofer. I'm trimming this board to 1.5 inch square. And I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but the driver will be facing down. So I really do need to make some feet for this enclosure. I'm not actually trying to make this as hard as humanly possible. Next we'll do a one quarter inch round over on the sides. And then I'll cut the individual feet to length on the miter saw. Then to create a mounting hole, I'll first mark the center point Then drill a mounting hole, and then do a little recess so my 2 inch deck screws can get a little extra bite in that 3 quarter inch cabinet material. Then I'll prime and paint these cute little wooden feet. I'm ready to apply the veneer. I've marked the center point of the veneer and the box to help line things up because you only get one chance at this. Once it's stuck, it's stuck. Now I just roll and press. Oh boy, it's already past 4 p.m. Time is really getting away from me. There's a trick to trimming the two ends on the back. I've done this different ways in the past. But for this, I'm putting down a few pieces of blue painter's tape and cutting through both layers of veneer at the same time. Then I just lift up the veneer and pull off the tape. Then I can just press down the veneer and the line will never show. Where's the seam? I can't even tell. Oh yeah, it's right there. But it's still pretty hidden. Here I'm using a veneer scraper and a J-roller to apply pressure to the veneer to set it. Now I have to trim the veneer and give it a quick block scene so I can apply the contact cement to the top of the enclosure and finish this thing up. I won't bore you with all of that footage, but just to prove to you that I didn't hire out the rest of the veneering to some Middle Eastern conglomerate, here's some video footage of that as well. Same deal for the top, high pressure to set the veneer, and trimming with a new razor and paint scraper, followed by a quick block sand, and some final hand sanding. For the finish, I sprayed on some Verithane Clear Gloss Polyurethane. See the time there? Yeah, I was really tired at this point. So tired, in fact, that I forgot to use my respirator. Well, for the first coats, anyway. The can says it dries to the touch in two hours, and dries hard in four hours. Well, dang bop it all, I didn't have four hours. I had to improvise. What I ended up doing was I sprayed a few light coats, then I waited about 10 minutes, and then I laid down two more real light coats. That's it. I used maybe half a can on this thing. It came out pretty good though, right? The poly has had just enough time to stop being sticky, and I was quickly running out of steam. So I took the enclosure to the basement and prepared for final assembly. So let's get this thing buttoned up and see how I did. I said the poly wasn't sticky, actually it kind of still was, just a little bit, but I didn't want to lay it down on its top because of that, so I held it while I installed the feet and then the driver. Then I could relax a bit while I installed the amplifier. I shoved a basketball sized wad of polyfill in the cabinet before placing the amp, just to quiet down any reverberance in the enclosure. Then I shot a few number 6 screws into the pre-drilled holes to mount the amp and done. There it is, it's done. So that's how this thing got built. 
I was very tired when I finally finished, but satisfied that I had achieved what I set out to do. Watch this video here if you want to see this subwoofer in action paired with a small computer style speaker system, which is what it's really designed for. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.